Thank you. So with keynotes, keynotes are always um, a centerpiece of any event that you put on, right? So you want your keynotes to capture ideas and topics that are widely applicable and ones that are reflective of the fact that you feel that as an organizer that they're really important because your keynote topics and your keynote speakers are a reflection of you as an organizing group putting something on. So you as an attendee can tell a lot about an event by the keynote topics and keynote speakers. Tracy, come on up. Uh, Tracy is, uh, I could give you her bio and it would take me about all day. She's a Microsoft MVP, I think I recently saw. Congratulations on that. She's a Google developer expert. She's a co-founder of this.labs. She runs um, Modern Web uh, and pretty much anything else you can think of, Tracy does. But the topic is diversity and inclusion. And I know you have been talking about this for a long time. So yeah. we definitely wanted to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. You are fantastic. You do a great Yay. job. So thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks, Todd. So hi, everybody. So excited to be here today. Uh, like Todd said, my name is Tracy. I'm the lead at a JavaScript consultancy called This.Labs. We do a lot for the JavaScript community, so we have a lot of free events and information out there, uh, and basically all things JavaScript. I'm also a Google Developer Expert, Microsoft MVP. I do community relations for the Node Foundation, and in my free time, I do things like sit on the RxJS core team, and who knows what else. So I'm doing a lot, as Todd said, um, but I'm very excited today specifically to talk about diversity and inclusion because this is something that I don't get to talk about very often. Um, and there are words that we hear very often, right? Um, but the question is, why does it really matter? Why are people actually talking about it? So in this talk, we're going to be defining a few different things. We'll talk about, hey, what is what are these two words? Um, why does it matter in product and application development? How does it affect the bottom line or does it? Hiring, retention, team culture, different case studies on people doing it right, building culture, and actually solving one of the biggest problems, which is the pipeline problem. So let's go ahead and define diversity first. Um, Gallup's, Gallup's definition of diversity is that it represents a full spectrum of human demographic differences. So it's race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, age, socioeconomic status, or physical disability. I really like this definition because it shows us that diversity isn't just about gender or skin color, and that's really important to note because that's a very common misconception. Uh, in fact, a lot of companies also consider lifestyles, personality characteristics, perspectives, opinions, family composition, education level, all uh, elements of diversity. So um, that means that if you're not respecting the idea of diversity, you're probably not respecting your current team. Now let's talk about inclusion. So inclusion refers to a sense of cultural belonging where employees feel valued, respected, accepted, and encouraged to fully participate. I'm sure this resonates with everybody because if you're on a team where you don't feel respected, accepted, or encouraged, you're probably not a happy person. It's not an inclusive environment for you. Employees in inclusive environments uh, feel appreciated for their unique characteristics, right? Um, they feel more comfortable sharing their ideas, and this is the sort of synergistic idea of if you have a good team that people feel welcome and included, then you're going to perform better. So let's talk about and take a deeper look into why it's also just very practical to have a diverse team when it comes to designing a product or an application. Um, this is a funnier example. So in 2012, Beak released a pen called Beak for Her. And you have to sort of think, like, was there not a diverse enough team of thinking about how this would come across in the market, right? The pens were purple and pink, and they were advertised as the perfect accessory that would add a, a touch of personality. And the internet really took to this. And uh, you can see here Hulk gave a review that he hates puny pens, and he demanded a beak for him. And there's also really funny uh, pictures where, you know, men are trying to use speak for her, but they can't seem to write because it's not designed for them. So pretty hilarious. Um, a little more serious is the Apple Watch. This is, so this is a great example as well of a product fail due to diversity. Um, after its release, customers started posting on social media that uh, the smartwatch, if you had darker skin, you couldn't detect, uh, it couldn't detect contact on the skin, and it couldn't detect your pulse. So that kind of sucks. 
And you know, we're just speculating here. We could call this a technology problem, right? But as a lot of companies have early testers for new products, and if you look at Apple's team right here, the executive team, uh, you have to wonder, hey, was the lack of diversity at the top the reason why this problem wasn't caught early on? Uh, in some instances, diversity and designing for diversity is actually a matter of life and death. So this is an artificial heart example. And uh, this is a Syncardia artificial heart. And it was used for the, um, patients with a body surface area of 1.7 square meters or greater. So unfortunately, for anybody but the average man, this life-saving heart is not designed for them. And that's pretty depressing, right? To say, hey, if I'm not an average man, my life does not matter or did not matter as much when designing this product. And why would a company value one person's life over another? Um, maybe, again, just speculating, was the team a majority male? We don't know. Um, to their defense, 10 years later, they did design a smaller heart, but it took them 10 years to get there. Um, another example, and not to pick on Uber, but when we look at newer tech companies like Uber, there was a lot of controversy around uh, drivers sexually attacking women, and some larger publications, like Inc. Magazine, for example, asked the question, would an Uber with more women in technical roles have built better tools for protecting female users from sexual attacks by their drivers? And I can't tell you how many times I've sort of considered not getting into an Uber because of my safety. So yeah, if I were there, I probably would have done that. Uh, so if those don't convince you why diversity matters for uh, teams, uh, money always talks, right? So the next question is, does diversity really affect the bottom line? And I had questions about this too. Does it actually affect the bottom line? Uh, according to CompTIA CEO Todd Thibodeau, he recently spoke about this and said that diversity efforts could actually net the IT industry over $400 billion extra in revenue each year. So yeah, I think that number definitely affects the bottom line. And uh, to back this up, McKinsey did a study with 366 public companies, and it showed that this is in fact true. Companies in the top quartile for racial and ethnic diversity are 35% more likely to have financial returns above their respective national industry medians. Uh, to be 30% more likely to do so is kind of awesome. Gender diversity is the same thing. 15% were more likely um, who were in the top quartile for gender diversity. So sorry to pick on Uber again, but this is kind of amazing because you can talk about you know extra $400 billion uh, top quartile, but if you look at Uber, this is actually a very direct example of how diversity or the lack thereof and the bad press generated from it um, affected Uber's numbers. So when Susan Fowler released her post in February of 2017, that year from then to June, Uber's market share actually decreased by 3.5% and Lyft's market share increased by 3.5%. That was insane to me. And if, if anything, that really convinced me that, wow, having an inclusive work environment is really, really important. Um, so employees are also the biggest cost to any organization, really. And let's talk about tips on how to make sure hiring, retention, and team culture can be improved. So I went to Twitter and asked why diverse teams matter. And Becca says that until a company has a more diverse team, they're going to keep missing out on great job candidates because they checked out your team page and saw a bunch of white dudes. Uh, so in order to make a more diverse team, especially during the hiring process, here's a few tips. So making sure that you're recruiting properly, uh, making sure that candidates are sourced through a variety of different methods, not just the traditional recruiting pipelines, making sure that your job descriptions are gender neutral, uh, making sure that diversity is actually listed on your career website, and all candidates, not just diverse candidates, should have the opportunity to meet with a diverse group of employees, right? If a woman is interviewing for a tech job and she only is interviewed by men, she's probably going to think, okay, well, this organization is just male. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so important to create an inclusive work culture is so that all team members feel like they're treated well. In fact, unfair treatment in the workplace is literally the single largest driver of turnover every single year, and it costs people over us, actually, over $16 billion per year in employee replacement costs. That is insane. So we can talk about diversity and inclusion and why it's important, all we want, but it's really about the execution of diversity and inclusion that's really important. So let's go ahead and look at a few case studies that, of people that have done it right. Um, Salesforce 
is really committed to fixing the gender wage gap and has spent over $6 million since 2015 doing this. In fact, in 2017 alone, over 11% of the Salesforce employees required a pay adjustment, which totaled $3 million just that year alone. That is really cool. Uh, intentional hiring is another really a uh, great way. We can look at Atlassian, for example. So they started in 2015 to say, hey, we're going to start changing the ratio when it comes to people coming into our company. And first it was 15%, 2016 was 17%, and then finally in 2017 it jumped to 57%. And now over 60% of the incoming graduates are actually women, and that is really, really, really cool to see. SAP is another great example. So they offer virtual training programs uh, called Focus on Insight, which help educate employees about diversity and inclusion. Um, next up, let's talk about different ways and reasons why diversity and inclusion is important and how to actually build an inclusive work culture. So I'm gonna give you guys a few tips here. So uh, I went to Twitter again and asked, and Carrie says that you should be using your platform to make certain topics safe to talk about and start that conversation if it's not already happening. Because chances are the conversation isn't happening not because it's not wanted, but because, because people don't know if it's a safe environment to do so. Uh, Cindy of Microsoft also shares a really good example. She says that uh, in her organization in Microsoft, one thing that they did was aim for a power of three. So three others have true decision-making voices in big team decisions. And Judith, uh, she says that, hey, it's really simple. Just remember to stand up and speak when you see a woman or person of color singled out to take notes or make coffee. If anybody asked me to make coffee because I was a woman, I would literally die. Um, but allies who are supportive in this, um, it's really easier you know, for the person who's not singled out to actually say something. So helping, helping out in that sense is really good. Um, I really love these five tips because they were kind of, you know, interesting for me to think about as well. Um, ways to improve inclusion in your workplace. Bounce ideas off of someone unexpected. Uh, change up your environment, right? If you change up your environment, you're gonna change up your way of thinking. Rotate who runs your meetings. Leave your assumptions at the door, that's assumed. And talk about something other than work. Um, externally as well, here are some great ways you can actually uh, be a better ally. So speak their name when they aren't around. Uh, share their career goals with influencers, recommend them for stretch assignments, and invite them to high-profile meetings, and also just endorse them publicly. So Carol Adams, who's a professor at Durham University Business School in England, she says that with diversity reporting, so this is another great way to build an inclusive culture within your organization, it actually affects people's perception of the workplace and job satisfaction. So when you do diversity reporting at the company, you start seeing more women and ethnic minorities applying for promotions, whereas before they might not have because they thought, hey, maybe there's no point. Additionally, whenever you're doing things like this, you want to make sure that you have metrics around it. So if you're going to start any diversity initiatives, you really want to make sure to benchmark your company by serving them, uh, make sure to identify ways of improvement, and think about, hey, are there, are there any demographics that have maybe suboptimal experiences, and also who needs more support? Who needs more support within your organization? Now, the hardest part about building a diverse team is, is of course, finding diverse hires. So um, there is a new pipeline, and this guy Ryan Craig, who's an author and investor, he said that faster and cheaper education models like coding boot camps have tremendous potential for to diversify competitive workforces. Uh, so when you look at that and you look at the metrics, um, Course Report came out with a demographic study, and in coding boot camps, there's 43% women. Uh, in coding boot camps versus university CS majors. Same thing for black and Latinos, 25% versus 10%. So these numbers should really encourage your team and recruiters to sort of look beyond the fresh college grads for entry level development positions. So what is still stopping the ratio from changing then? If you have an influx of women and um, underrepresented minorities coming in, what is the actual problem still? Well, hiring bias, right? So that's very important. Um, we tend to recruit those who are sim uh, culturally similar to ourselves, right? Um, so during the interview process, the actual hiring of getting these folks into tech becomes the actual bottleneck. And because we all have implicit bias, right, and because there's a lot of white males in, in tech, then you know we tend to recruit 
uh, they tend to recruit people like themselves. Um, and the problem, again, is because we don't have enough diverse leaders, right? There's not enough, a large percentage of diverse leaders to help change this ratio. In fact, 70% of tech companies have no female board members and 54% have actually no female executives. So there's also a huge retention problem in tech. Um, women are leaving, why are they leaving? Uh, in the first year, women are 45% more likely to leave than men. And you might think, okay, well, they're all having babies. Who, want, who doesn't want, I wanna be a stay-at-home wife or mom, whatever. Um, but that's not the actual reason. The reason why they're leaving is because of isolation, the macho culture, or lack of sponsors. So this goes back again to the problem of inclusiv inclusivity that we've been talking about. So we can kind of summarize the issues um, that we've been seeing and about finding and keeping diverse hires into sort of four key areas. Uh, you need to fix your pipeline, you need to get diverse pipelines, hiring bias needs to be addressed, teams need to start growing their next diverse leaders, and inclusive cultures need to be created so people don't keep leaving. So then I thought to myself, can I solve this problem? And uh, I decided to create this thing called a Hire the Fempire program at this dot um, to help companies succeed at changing the ratio. So what I wanted to share was some ways that we solve this problem to give you guys some ideas on how you can, or you know, of course, we'd love to help you. So one thing that we do is we actually work with a lot of boot camps and diverse organizations to build a pipeline, and we have this steady pipeline of diverse candidates coming in. The next thing we do is addressing the hiring bias problem. So the way we do that is we actually interview these diverse candidates through um, unbiased interview processes and with a diverse hiring committee so that your team doesn't have to do it themselves. Uh, teams needing to grow their next diverse leaders. So one thing that happens when you hire people through our program is we actually pair them with a senior architect mentor as well. So they work side by side on client projects. And um, this helps provide them support and teaches them how to be the next leaders so that you can hire them after uh, the contract engagement. Um, inclusive cultures as well, so this is really important. Uh, learn by watching. So with these amazing architects, senior developers that we have on our team, uh, since they're paired with the people, the underrepresented minorities, uh, we teach our team and lead by example. And we try to facilitate more inclusive cultures within your organization. Uh, so, you know, if you can start addressing these four problems, hopefully you can start building a more uh, diverse culture and pipeline within your organization, much like Atlassian and other companies have really done. Um, I'm really committed this year. I love that I get to be committed this year to this on just increasing diversity, right? So if you need help, I, I would love to be able to work with some organizations and increase the percentage of diversity you can just hire our women developers, it's awesome. Our team is also really amazing. It consists of core contributors to Angular, React, Vue, React Native, GraphQL. Um, and again, the women on our team, you can just convert them to full-time hires once you start working with them. So we talked about a lot of amazing different things today. Hopefully that helps. I'll be here all day. I have really cute stickers called Change the Ratio stickers um, and a ton of other stickers, so come find me. Um, and I just wanna leave you with this, right? Like you can't hope for happy endings. You really need to believe in them and then do the work that it takes to take the risks and make reality, diversity and inclusion happen within your organization. My name's Tracy, you can find me on Twitter at Lady Elite. Email me, message me, whatever. And uh, thanks for letting me talk.